What are REST APIs and why are they so popular? An API is a contract between a provider and a client that allows them to exchange information. An example of a provider is YouTube itself and the client it's you. The information exchange is the video you're watching right now. REST means Representational State Transfer and is an architectural style defined by Roy Fielding. REST APIs are usually served over HTTP. That is not the case because Fielding is also author of the HTTP protocol and that explains why HTTP semantics lend themselves to REST. REST is composed of six constraints. Let's start from the first one. The first constraint of REST is to use a client-server architecture. The advantage of this approach is that we can implement and scale clients independently. You can have millions of clients streaming videos which are served by a comparatively very small number of servers. The next constraint is stateless communication. For that to be possible, each client's request must contain all the necessary information for the server to process it. The server should not store any contest or session. The advantage of a stateless architecture is that it's reliable and easier to scale, because there is no state on the server side that needs to be replicated if we want to increase the number of servers offering our API. The other constraint is that the server must flag responses that are cacheable. This is key to improve network efficiency by reducing communication between client and servers. It also improves the quality of the user experience because it removes the latency between the two parties. The uniform interface is where the contract portion of the API takes shape. The goal is to have server and client communicate without sharing their implementation. The server could be Java, while the client could be JavaScript. But that's irrelevant because what matters is that they exchange information in a standard way. To create a uniform interface, we need to do the following. First of all, identify resources. We do that in HTTP using unique URLs for each resource. Product A has a different URL than Product B. We manipulate resources through their representation. When we request the product details, the server responds with a representation of the product, in this case in JSON format. We can update the resource by sending back a modified version of the representation. We use self-descriptive messages. Each message needs to be complete and contain all the information for it to be processed. In HTTP, we do that by using methods, response codes and headers. Methods are used to define what we intend to do with a request. Do we want to create a product, get its details, update it or delete it? Methods are classified by their idempotency and safety. A method is idempotent if it produces the same outcome when the request is repeated multiple times, while a method is safe if it does not modify the underlying resource. Response codes are used by the server to indicate whether the request was accepted and completed. Finally, we have headers that are used for a multitude of scenarios. It could be for authentication or to define the content type. It is also possible to create custom headers if necessary. The last uniform interface requirement is to use hypermedia as the engine of application state. This means that our messages should include links that allow the client to browse the API. Given an initial link, a client should be able to discover all the URLs present in the API. According to Fielding, this requirement is a must, but in practice, a lot of APIs out there do not implement it. In fact, Richardson has created a maturity model to define how RESTful is an API. Based on its model, most REST APIs in the wild reach only the second level. The next constraint we have in REST is a hierarchical layer system, where each layer cannot see beyond the surrounding layers. We could add CDNs, 
firewalls, load balances, API gateways, but that should be transparent to the client, which is only bound to comply with the uniform interface. The final requirement is code on demand, which is optional. It caters for those scenarios where code is downloaded and executed on the client side. The typical example is the JavaScript downloaded on our browsers, that make web pages dynamic. That's all, we made it. But how do we create a REST API? The best approach is to start with the contract definition. We can use a specification language like OpenAPI, which allows us to design the API and share it with our team and stakeholders. The same specification can be used to auto-generate documentation pages and event client and server tabs in any language using the OpenAPI generator tool. If you want me to showcase how to do it, leave me a comment in the section below. As usual, I ask you to like the video. If you're not subscribed yet, you can subscribe because that helps me create more content like this. And see you next video.